It's the same question every year, but how does it feel two days in this year versus, uh, say, a year ago? It's a whole lot different, actually. Um, I can honestly say that it's maybe one of the best. I would say our first day this year was one of the best first days I've ever had coaching in the WNBA. And, and the reason is that, you know, last year everything felt new with this group. We had six new players. Uh, you know, your key players were different. Um, and so it was like a constant learning process last year. I think the maturity that we gained going through last season, and particularly the playoffs, was instructive to our team. The way we were able to communicate with our players in the off season and everything from expectations to extra work, the things that we were going to emphasize, they kind of had a head start on it. And so you were starting from a way better advanced point this year than you were a year ago. It just felt like we could just pick up a little bit from where we left off. The other part is a lot of our rookies came in early last week and they had some non-pressure days with assistant coaches to kind of learn terminology and what would be expected. So they didn't have all these nerves uh, all on the first day. They were able to kind of get it out of their system by working out last week with some of our veterans. And our veterans were great about talking them through things and helping them. So I thought that, you know, what we were to accomplish before we ever started training camp set a good tone for how it started. So I've been really happy with you know, the first couple of days. About how many people were able to spend significant time here during the offseason? We had people around. Oh, up names. boy, we had Elena and Tiana and Tosh and TRP and Allie Hightower came in for part of the time. Okay. Um, so, and Taylor was here doing all of her rehab. So, you know, five or six players, you know, kind of consistently in and out all offseason that I think really helps set a tone and we could talk about you know on the court and off the court things how you lead how do you include your teammates better in things in discussions how do you confront when you have something that's not working how do you deal with that kind of stuff and I think that's part of the growing up process you know when we played Minnesota in the playoffs you're looking down the court at a very veteran team who had gone through that process we hadn't done it yet and so I thought that we could take those experiences and go back and talk to our players about it, and it would make sense to them again. Mo Curry was coming in here and said that one of the roles she's going to play off court certainly as a vocal veteran leader. What does she bring to, from that aspect? I think there's a couple things. Number one, um, you know, having played here before and then gone somewhere else gives you a different perspective on things. You know, there's things maybe about us here that she appreciates maybe more than she did before, and there's things she's learned at other places that are a little bit different that she can bring to us and help younger teammates with. I think the fact that she can um, kind of step back from the process a little bit and say, okay, this is what I've learned over my career, help a young player do that. So that's where her voice will be important, you know, on and off the court. And then from a basketball standpoint, I think she's gotten better. Um, you know, it was hard for us to convince her that, you know, the three-point shot was really that important in the pro game. You know, we used to call her Toe Curry with her foot on the line, and I make fun of her about it. But now she understands, hey, you know, those three extra baskets you can get from making a three uh, really help your team. And so I think that her focus on understanding different parts of the game is way better than it was when she was younger. Speaking of adjustments, Elena talked about how she's much more comfortable going back to the floor. Obviously, she can play anywhere on the floor, yep. but why does that spot suit her so well? Just because she's used to it? I think part of it's used, used to it. I mean, she started out when she was in high school as a point guard. Uh, so, you know, it's a little bit different, but I think because she's played so long as the four, uh, especially when you're what we call a stretch one, you can step out behind the three-point line or post up, um, you know, you see that the diversity in her game gets better used. I think last year in playing the three, it got our best players on the floor, but I think that we didn't get her enough shots last year uh, in spots that you know she's better at with the ball. Uh, we didn't post her up as much last year. I think that now that you know she's she's comfortable in that and she can see the game a little bit differently. And then the other part of it is on the defensive end. Just chasing smaller players around screens all day is different than what she was used to on the defensive end. Yeah. In terms of her comfort off the court, just standing here with us now, she seems uh, far more at ease than she did a year ago. And, and she puts out that statement a week or so ago about the, the need for more marketing to the league, something where she admitted it wouldn't have, wouldn't have done. In fact, have you noticed a, a, a 
security growth? I think, yeah, I mean, I think she's more comfortable in her own skin. Uh, number one, last year you're coming in with all the, the headlines that she came here with, but you don't know your new teammates. You're trying to get this blend of fitting in yet being a leader. I think you kind of tiptoe around things sometimes. Um, so I think, you know, the comfort zone that she has with our staff and with her teammates helps. I think we've empowered her to be more vocal, to say more things. Uh, she and I have talked uh, all off season about leadership. Uh, she's talked with Eric about it a lot. Uh, we send her articles or you know, videos of things that, you know, just to kind of say, hey, you know, what do you think about this? And you could see it. I mean, coming in the gym the other day and going around and talking to each of the rookies that she did and, you know, say, hey, what do you need? You know, what don't you know? That's, that's a different Elena than the one who was coming in trying to just fit in. Now she knows that, you know, they're looking to her, whereas before, you got a bunch of teammates you don't know. In terms of uh, some of the other players who, it's only a couple days, but who have you noticed that has maybe uh, kind of stepped up or, 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 or added a new uh, break in their game? Uh, I think probably if you walked in from a year ago's team, you would notice the conditioning of several of our players. I mean, Tiana Hawkins uh, right now looks like uh, the best version of herself. Um, she has worked hard on her conditioning, her diet, um, working on extending her range and being a stretch four that you know, we can use to play, just like we do with Elena, at different spots on the floor. You know, obviously the other veterans like uh, Tierra Ruffin Pratt and, and Natasha Cloud have come in uh, with with great voices for their teammates in great great shape. I mean, they're they're in better shape, you know, our veterans, uh, you know, than a lot of players in the league because they've learned uh, over the course of time to take better care of their bodies and they've learned how to use their voice more constructively uh, in and outside of the locker room. So I think. You know, from an X and O standpoint on the basketball court, shooting, not shooting, I don't know that I even want to comment on that yet just because we're so, you know, short of time into practice. But you just see a maturity level to this team that wasn't there a year ago. Coach, every time, almost every time in the post-game presser and you look at the box score, you would always look at the rebounding and say whether you had been beaten or had won uh, against the other team in terms of rebounding. How is adding Maisha Hines Allen and, you know, some of the other pieces going to contribute to that important part of your system? Well, first of all, my you should got to make the team. Okay, sure. <laughs> so, so, and she knows that. I, I mean, I'm, I'm being, you know, a little bit tongue in cheek, but you know, we got we have great competition right now. So I think that helps everybody uh, when people are competing for spots. You know, a lot of it has been forgotten that Latoya Sanders is coming back in the next week, and she is one of the premier defensive players in the league and rebounders. So, there's going to be a lot of. Uh, you know, you had Crystal Thomas who finished second or third in the league in rebounding last year. So there's going to be a war amongst our post players just to outdo each other on the practice court uh, for rebounding, you know, uh, rights, I guess. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think that's a huge part. I mean, for me, turnovers and rebounding and, and foul differences are big in a lot of your wins. And we got better in all of those areas. Um, and rebounding is going to be a focus from the start here. No, it's a fluid situation. What's your guess right now as to how many roster spots really are kind of a player right now? A couple.